in life, like there's ups and downs month by month, week by week. And quite frankly, day by day, there are ups and downs in your day. And every day is not going to be sunshine and rainbows. But if you can find the happiness in each day, and if you can put yourself in a place where you're more aware of it, more cognizant of it when it's happening, then at the end of the day, when you look back, you can see the positives. You can see the happy moments, the moments that you did enjoy, and not just focus on the day as a whole, which may have been a negative connotation, that you can pinpoint those bright moments in a dark day, and it can give you more excitement for the next day. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Sales Wolves podcast. As always, I'm your host, Tyler Jack Harris, and I am a sales wolf. Ah, That's right. We're back, just like we are every single week. If you're turning tuning in for the turning in, if you're turning in for the first time, I don't even know what that would mean. If you are tuning in for the first time, this is episode 153. So you've got a lot of catching up to do. And while you're there, subscribe and leave a rating on the podcast. That would really help. So go do that now and then come back. Okay, now we're back. So episode 153 of the Sales Wolves podcast. And on this episode, I want to talk about happiness. And I want to start off by saying that success is not the key to happiness. Happiness is the key to success. And so we're in a new year. It's 2020. What can you do this year to be more happy? You know, I watched this video a while back, and I've actually watched it a number of times with uh, Sad Guru. Uh, it's his interview with uh, Tom Bilyeu on the Impact Theory podcast. It's incredible. Highly recommend you go checking it out. Um, That guy is like the wisest man and his laugh (laughs) is like infectious because his laugh like comes from this place of like, yeah, it's funny, but it's more funny because I know infinitely more about what I'm talking about than you do. (laughs) And it's just this like deep, soulful laugh, but I just got off on a tangent there. In that video, um, he talks about happiness and that happiness is a choice, and that you can choose to be miserable, or that you can choose to be happy in any and all circumstances. That if I decided that Caitlin makes me miserable, then just her entering the room just now, I'm a miserable person, and I am miserable. So if we have this choice, in life of being miserable or being happy, of course we would choose happy. But do your actions prove that choice? Do the things that you're doing on a daily basis lead you to that happiness? And so, you know, it's, it's simple to sit up here and say happiness is a choice. So be happy. Well, it's a far more complex process. Um, than that. And so I've really been in a lot of thought on what that process would look like um, as we ended 2019 and and came into 2020. And like many or all of you um, looking at goals for the new year, but trying to look at them for me uh, in a little bit of a different perspective. And that perspective was how can I be happier in 2020? And so I started thinking about how could I, you know, how could I figure that out? Like how can, how can, you know, there's a, there's a process and there's a system for everything. Um, how can I create some type of process or, or do some type of practice to make it more, um, make myself more aware of how I could ultimately be happier and the things that I would need to do to be consciously improving on my happiness on a daily basis. 
And so I wanted to uh, propose that to you, and it's perfect timing because I literally just did this yesterday. Um, I came to the office. Nobody was here. I was by myself. And I spent probably three or four hours doing this. Um, So I'll preface by saying it, it will take some time. But I came out of this process um, looking back on that period of time as, as being invaluable um, and quite easily uh, worth the time that I spent. So here's what I did. Everyone has a phone, and they have a phone that takes pictures. And generally, when you go about your daily life, you take pictures you know, of important stuff. You take pictures of, you know, things that you're enjoying or things that for whatever reason, you know, made an impact. Um, There's certainly a lot of other things we take pictures of, but we don't necessarily take pictures of things that were unenjoyable or that were miserable, right? So I just sat here at my desk and I scrolled through my phone. And I scrolled through every photo that I took in 2019 and 2018 which took a long time because I take a lot of photos. Um, this was thousands of photos that I poured through. I've got like 60,000 photos on my phone. Um, so the last two years, I mean, it was thousands of photos that I, that I scrolled through, but I tried to do it slow enough to where I could look at each individual picture. I didn't swipe left and just go through it that way. I was looking at them in the, in the album, but I specifically was searching for pictures that I know in that moment, I was happy. The picture I could be smiling or it could just be a picture that I I remember like what was going on then. I remember what I was doing then. And I remember like really, really enjoying that time. And so what I would do um, was I would just click on them and put them in an album, click on them and put them in an album click on them and put them in an album. And it was, it was interesting. Um, very introspective, uh, process. Uh, I would say as, as most of you, um, who'd be willing to go and do this yourself, which I'm obviously recommending that there can be a lot of emotions that come into play as you go through that process, you're experiencing a lot of different events over the last year. And that's probably what I'd recommend is just looking at the last year. But I want to say as a caveat to this, or not really a warning, but just a caveat that if you have trouble finding a lot of pictures, that that's, you know, certainly a symptom of something that needs to be addressed, right? If you're having a hard time finding pictures of yourself happy, then you need to get happier. And there's a lot of things that need to go into that, which I'm not going to go into and I'm not qualified to go into. But what I did was I then took all those photos, which, um, you know, there ended up being well over a hundred photos. Um, what I didn't do was try to replicate a lot of things like, you know, picture of me, there's, there was a picture of me doing the sales Wolves podcast. I didn't put 50 pictures of there. You know, one was enough. Uh, so not duplicating a lot of the same feelings or the same environments or same activities, but ended up with over a hundred pictures. And then I transferred those photos to my uh, computer. And for those that don't have any graphics background or, you know, creative background like myself, uh, I just used PowerPoint. And I took all those pictures and made like a collage. It ended up being four pages of just this collage of images from the last two years for me. And, and really just the last year is, is most important. Then I started observing, just like looking at all these photos kind of all like mapped out in front of you and started looking at correlations between the things that I was doing. A lot of, you know, the majority of the photos for me were with family, uh, with my wife and with my daughter and different places that we've been to. But the whole goal of this exercise is to figure out how you can do more of those things in 2020, how you can put yourself in a position 
to experience more happiness just simply by doing more of those things that you did last year that made you happy. Like this is a logical, simple thought process, right? But what's logical and simple isn't always what we do. Um, a lot of times you'll say, well, I'm just going to meditate on it, or I'm just going to think about it and figure these things out. But I found that this exercise actually was tremendously helpful in figuring out like, what are the things that I do that I get genuine enjoyment out of? Um, a lot of it was the social media stuff that I do. A lot of it was pictures of live Q and A's, um, pictures of speaking on, on stage, pictures of recording modern man episodes and vlog episodes and various things that I've done in regards to my personal brand. But a lot of it was, uh, surprising, I think, um, that circumstances where, um, at, as a whole, that particular task or activity or job responsibility didn't necessarily have the greatest connotation or the greatest feeling when I remember it, but seeing a certain picture from it, I'm like, man, that was, that part was really, really fun. Um, you know, different things like the, the trainings that I've been doing in the field with people, uh, traveling all over the country, uh, the last six months of the year. Um, that was a difficult time. Like it was difficult to travel, you know, to 16 different States in like 20 weeks or so. Um, but there were parts of it that I had photos of that I really, really enjoyed, uh, boot camp trainings that we do here with our new agents. When I look back at the end of that weekend on Sunday, I'm usually very drained and I look back and I'm like, man, that was a difficult weekend. But a lot of the pictures came from those boot camp trainings because there was moments in each of those trainings that were just a lot of fun and I genuinely enjoyed and was happy during that process. And other just seemingly mundane things that you go through in your business that I could identify specific times that, you know, that was a good, positive, happy moment. And so I really got a lot of clarity, um, going through this exercise. Uh, I was able to take what I saw and start creating a new, um, map or a new collage kind of in my head of how I could create more of those moments in 2020. And, you know, time will tell, but I, I believe that that is going to be a good strategy. Like I believe, you know, I've got a, a journal that I'm keeping this year and I've got those pages folded up in there and to be able to reference those, you know, on a periodic basis, just to remind myself, uh, remind myself not only of the things that i that made me happy, but it's a reminder of being more present in the moment and realizing how happy you are, where you are, uh, is super important because, you know, there's a, some quote, um, that I heard a while back. It was, um, you know, not every day is good, but there's good in every day. And I've used that phrase in a lot of different parallels. Like, you know, I'm not motivated every day, but every day I'm motivated. And the reality is in life, like there's ups and downs month by month, week by week. And quite frankly, day by day, there are ups and downs in your day. And every day is not going to be sunshine and rainbows. But if you can find the happiness in each day, and if you can put yourself in a place where you're more aware of it, more cognizant of it when it's happening, then at the end of the day, when you look back, you can see the positives. You can see the happy moments, the moments that you did enjoy and not just focus on the day as a whole, which may have been a negative connotation that you can pinpoint those bright moments in a dark day. And it can give you more excitement for the next day, more drive and motivation for the next day, more, you know, feeling of purpose and passion when you wake up the next day to go do maybe the exact same thing again, but how can I create more of those moments tomorrow? And so I would highly recommend taking the couple of hours that it'll take. I mean, if you're, if you're just doing one year, you know, I probably take more photos than, than most. Um, it shouldn't take you too long. But I think if you 
have that laid out for you visually, I think you'd be pleasantly surprised by the amount of clarity it gives you in the direction to take your year and the direction that, you know, you need to take your, you know, daily activities and daily mindset. Um, you know, through that process, it really gave me a lot of clarity on the things that I don't want to do as well, which is equally as important. Um, but it put everything into perspective. You know, I'm traveling a lot, but the vast majority of my pictures were with my family. That creates some friction. You know, I got to figure out a way to be home more. Um, a lot of pictures were from my time in Nicaragua. Uh, and in my time where I was giving of my time and resources and energy. And I know that I've already put plans in place for that to be a larger, um, play a larger role in 2020 for me. And so I know in and of itself that that will bring more happiness. But I think if we can just, you know, in the goal of this podcast is really to take the emphasis off success being monetary taking emphasis off success being so transactional and allowing ourselves to measure success by how happy we are on a daily basis. You know, how happy we are, you know, at the end of the week, at the end of the month. And I think in that process, the other will happen. So in the process of focusing more of your time and energy on success being happiness, I promise you more success will come in the other ways. You know, they, they say focus, uh, income goes where focus flows, income flows where focus goes or where focus goes, income flows. Like if your focus is on being happy and again, that can be a choice you make in those circumstances, or it can be by putting yourself in more of those circumstances that you already know make you happy. If you can do that more, and if you can live your life in a happier place, then you will be more successful in the other areas that we measure success. It's just a fact. So that's really it. Um, you know, a day after that's my observation. Uh, we may do a follow up on this, you know, a couple months from now and, you know, talk about how I've seen it play out and how I've seen changes made and how I've been more happy. I mean, quite frankly, I, I look forward to being able to talk about how uh, it made an impact. Uh, and I'd really love, you know, for it to do the same thing for you and for us to be able to have conversations about the impact that it made. Um, but no different than the, idea of putting together a vision board. It's kind of like putting together a happiness board and getting super clear on the things that bring happiness into your life and ultimately in the process, attracting more of that in the years to come. So with that, this is episode 153 of the sales wolves podcast. As always, I'm your host, Tyler Jack Harris, and I am a sales wolf. Ow!